this is kombucha. Kombucha has been the latest craze over the last five years or so. Uh, it's grown in popularity. A month by month, I see more and more people mention it on TV and things like that. This is what I make at home. This is my lemon lime flavor. Uh, you can make pretty much any flavor you want. And that is the beauty of making it at home is you can not only make your own flavors, but the cost effectiveness is significant. So to begin with, kombucha is a fermented sweet tea uh, that is used that uses a culture of bacteria and yeast. That culture is often referred to as a mushroom because it grows into a mushroom shape. And what it's called is a SCOBY, which is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. It's usually tan or light brown in color and little floaty sometime remain in your, your drink at this very small amount. Um, but that is um, required if you wanna make your own SCOBY at home, um, you can except that you do need to get your hands on some raw kombucha. The only ones that make it right now are GT that I'm aware of. There may be other brands out there, but from what I um, have been seeing over the last few years is GT is the only brand that makes a raw kombucha that you can actually make your own SCOBY out of. I will teach you how to do both your own SCOBY and how to make your own kombucha if you do get your hands on your own SCOBY and starter tea. Um, the things that you're going to need are a pot, that's important to boil your water. You're going to need sugar. I use sugar in the raw. I make mine as organic as possible. And black tea. Now there's controversy as to black tea versus green tea. And for me, I prefer the black tea. That's just my preference from what I have uh, read. Green tea supposedly makes a better SCOBY. However, black tea doesn't um, go into vinegar, I guess, as quickly as the green tea from what I have read. Now you can also add your own fruit. I just have some apples here as an example. And this back here is my starter tea with a SCOBY at the top. And there's also a SCOBY in the bottom. So this one I can sell and this one will be ready to make a new batch. And we'll go over that um, in just a little bit. So once you have all your things together, we'll start with making our first batch. Okay, so now we're going to add our water. I'm adding just the last bit of my water right here. I'm gonna give you very strict calculations on what you need for a standard batch, which is going to give you four quarts or 16 cups of kombucha for the whole week. Now, you can divide that up, multiply it, whatever. This is for my family use. I double mine. So instead of adding 14 cups of water, like I am here, I add 28. This I make for um, batches I give away to people in the community. Now, while that's boiling, we're gonna do a couple of things. First, we're gonna go over our measurements. For a standard, like I said, for four quarts that you wanna make for your next week's kombucha, you're gonna wanna use 14 cups of water, one cup of sugar, you're gonna use eight tea bags, and you're gonna use a SCOBY, one SCOBY, usually about this size, and about at least a quarter to a half inch thick. And then you're going to use a um, the starter tea from your last batch. Now this is your first time making it. What you're going to do is take two cups of raw kombucha you get from the store. If not, you use two cups from a previous batch and mix it in with the 14 cups you're gonna have it um, for your next batch. Um, that is going to start fermenting for next week. Now, let's say you have no SCOBY. You don't know what to do, but you do have some raw kombucha. You're gonna put this cup concoction in half. So instead of 14 cups, you're gonna use seven cups of water half a cup of sugar and whatnot. And you're gonna use one cup of your kombucha from the store. And what you're going to do is once you add your sugar and cool your tea down and add your tea and cool it, you're gonna add the starter tea and you're just gonna keep that open in a glass jar, cheesecloth or just a regular cloth over it and let that sit for two to about six weeks depending on how the temperature is in your home. Warmer homes in the 70 to 80 degree range is gonna take about two to three weeks. 
cooler temperatures will take a little longer to make your own SCOBY. Um, but the, the process is the same, adding the sugar and adding the tea, letting it cool. That's it. It's very simple. Um, while I'm also in the process of letting this boil, I get my tea bags ready. I'm going to take these out of the packages. But most importantly, I'm going to take my glass jars that I'm going to use from last week's tea that's been fermenting on my counter. I'm going to make my kombucha uh, and flavor it. And what I want to do with these, I've washed these. Now I'm going to put them in the oven at 200 degrees for about 15 minutes, and this will help to sterilize them. So I'm going to put one glass in at a time. I put mine upside down just like that. Nothing fancy. And if they're wet, that's fine too. The water will evaporate. So I'll just put that for 15 minutes. By then, my water will have started boiling. I can add my tea. We'll go from there. Okay, so now we got water boiling. I'm going to shut this off. We're going to add in our sugar. So, like I said, 14 cups of water. We're going to use one cup of sugar. You can use white sugar, cane sugar. They, they say you should use just any type of granulated white sugar, but I've used my sugar in the raw many times without a problem. Now that's all sitting on the bottom, so you're gonna stir that up until it melts, which only takes about, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, not very long. And then I'm going to take this off the heat and I'm going to add in my tea bags. Now, if you're pressed for time, because say, you know, you do this in the evening after you get home from work, uh, what you want to do is you can reduce the amount of water. Say instead of 14 cups, you put two cups into ice cubes. So you only boil up 12 cups. And then you add in your two cups of ice cubes when your tea is done brewing. That will cool down your tea quicker. You do not want to add your tea to your SCOBY or your SCOBY to your tea uh, when it's hot. You will kill a lot of the good bacteria and the good yeast and you will offset that balance that it has growing. Um, so that's very important is you do not want to add hot tea to a SCOBY. You want to cool it down first. Now I have plenty of time so I can let this sit on my countertop and wait till it cools. I have all my tea bags here, bunched up, and I don't even, you don't have to dip it or anything, it just sits right in the water. I keep my, my lid like that, just so some of the steam can escape, so it cools a little bit faster, but that will be ready in about four to five hours um, to set for this evening to put in with our fruit. And that's it, to the next step. Okay, so now we're back. When we have our tea is nice and cooled, I touch the pot, nice and cool, put my finger in, nice and room temperature. Um, here we have a gallon size glass. This is what you're going to ferment your kombucha in. You're going to have your SCOBY with your starter tea. So now this gets a little complicated, and I'm going to try to explain all three things so that you can understand it. If you have no SCOBY and you're making your own SCOBY, and we have, let's say we have seven cups of tea, and you have your GT raw kombucha in your hand, you're going to take something like this, a two quart glass jar, because this will hold eight cups. And this is what you're gonna grow your SCOBY in. So you're not gonna be able to make kombucha for at least two to four, possibly six weeks. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take your sweet tea that's heated, you're going to put it in there, you're going to put your one cup of your GT starter, or your, you know, your raw kombucha, and you're going to put some cheesecloth over it. It doesn't matter, you can use any cloth, a dishcloth, as long as it's open to the air. And then you want to keep it out of sunlight. That's how you want to grow it. You're going to put a, a towel around it, put it in the corner of your kitchen, and just leave it be. And that's going to grow 
a school before you. Nothing's going to happen that first week. You might see little bubbles, a thin film building, but don't start your SCOBY in something like this. The reason being the surface area, the top surface area, is what the SCOBY is going to want to cover. It's going to want to cover the very top. So this, as you can see my SCOBY in here, was in here. It's very large. It covers the whole surface. My initial SCOBY was the size of this. That's what you want to start with. I put it in here, started off like this, and by the next week, it had covered the entire surface, top surface of this glass jar. So it's very important when you start your own SCOBY, you want to start with a smaller surface area because you're going to grow your SCOBY a lot faster. Start with something like this, it may take you 8 to 12 weeks. So start it with a glass jar like this. Okay, so that's for if you have no SCOBY. Now, let's say you have your SCOBY in hand and some starter tea that you bought in the mail. And it comes in a bag and you put it in a cup and you're like, now what do I do? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to put your tea into a fresh clean jar. Your clean jar, you can sterilize it if you wish. I would recommend it the first time. I don't sterilize mine after the first time. Do not, in between, in between every week when you're making a new batch, batch do not wash it in non-bacterial soap or antibacterial soap. The antibacterial soap will leave a residue which will then start killing off the good bacteria in your SCOBY. So I use just regular Dawn or Palm Olive, nothing that has antibacterial things in it, and then I just rinse it with hot water and I'm done. Sometimes I don't even clean mine in between batches. It's not necessary as long as your SCOBYs are nice and healthy. So what you're going to do, you have your SCOBY, you have your starter tea. What I do is I put my SCOBY in at the very last. It's just a preference I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now move my tea into here. And then you're going to have tea, a new batch, to start with next week. Okay, so now I just poured the, the tea into the, the glass jar here. As you can see, we have a little bit of room left. So what I want to do is I want to pour my starter tea into here and mix it up just a little bit. So I'm just going to hold on to my scoby here so it doesn't go in. I'm put my starter tea. It gets all over the place sometimes. And that's okay. And then I'm just going to take a ladle or a spoon and I'm just going to stir it up. And then with clean hands, I just finished washing my hands, you're going to take your SCOBY, which is going to look disgusting. Now mine is about, oh, I'm about five batches. Mine is really thick. This is my top. This is my bottom. This was my old SCOBY. Let's see, where is it here? It's in here somewhere. That little circle right there, that was my original SCOBY. So you can see it. And what I'm going to do is that's going to go on the bottom. That's called your mother. That's your original thing. Now this is a baby that's growing on top. As you can see, it's growing its own layer. Now this can come apart in the next week or so, as you can see. And then there'll be a new one I can give to a friend or a family member or sell it. Now that's just going to go right in there. And then I'm going to take my cheesecloth and um, put a rubber band around it. And I'm going to put that with a cloth around it and put it in the corner of my kitchen out of the sunlight. And you're going to have kombucha tea fermented in one week. Now... The one thing that I uh, forgot to mention, too, before with the tea bags, everybody says something different. They say, dunk it, dunk it, dunk it like you would your regular tea. Some people say, leave it. Some people have a spe special amount of time. They want their tea to stay in the water. For me, it doesn't really matter. It comes out great either way. So what I do is I just, I had left my tea bags in there for the three hours. It was cooling down. Not a big deal. It doesn't, for me, change the taste of my kombucha in the end. It's all a matter of preference. But anyway, um, what you're going to do, you're going to put this in your corner. And next week, you're going to then take 
the tea that's in here and transfer it into new jars and you're going to then bottle it up to make the to get the carbonation finalized now when I had transferred this over when I have actually put my SCOBY out of this jar into here it was actually kind of bubbly it has its own carbonation to finish the carbonation process what you're going to do is next week when you're ready with this you're going to take your tea and put it in glass jars just like this you can use any size you want it doesn't matter as long as it has a tight lid on it you're going to put your tea like I have here this was from my other last week's batch I have blueberries in here I'm going to make blueberry kombucha I used about two handfuls you really just have to play around with it some things will make some, more fruit will be better some won't so now this I'm going to put a tight lid seal on and I'm going to set it on the counter of course covered with a cloth so it's out of the sunlight for they recommend 24 to 72 hours now with anything with carbonation you're going to have buildup of air you're going to have to quote unquote burp it if you want to leave it out for 72 hours I only do 24 hours because there's a lot of different complications that arise with leaving it out for 72 hours a if you forget and you leave it there for three days you might have a glass explosion on your hand you want to leave a little bit of room for the air to kind of come up into but it's going to expand expand it's got nowhere to go it's going to explode so you want to be very careful with how long you leave it on the counter to prevent that I use plastic caps that you can buy for your your glass uh, mason jars this will not provide a tight seal it will provide some carbonation but not much my kids do not like their uh, kabusha carbonated uh, at, they think it makes it more spicy so we use these on some of our kabusha some of the other ones I use the um, the oops. we use these lids okay and you can press it down if you want when you put it on and you want to burp it these lids here you want to burp once a day I mean, sometimes twice a day depending on how much carbonation you think is building up in there so what you're going to do is my kabusha from last week I have another jar just like this and I'm going to take that out and I'm going to pour it into here and then I'm going to put the rest of my tea back into here for my next batch it seems confusing we watched a video over if you need to it's not that hard it's just it's a little confusing especially if you're new to this now you can use different um, types of fruits now this is my lemon ginger I use one and a half uh, medium to large size lemons I use keep the rind on so I make sure they're organic and I wash them and I put a piece of ginger root in there about that big apple cinnamon this is my kids favorite I use two large granny Smith apples or four for the small bite size uh, Granny Smith ones in half of a cinnamon stick. You can use powdered cinnamon, however, I can guarantee you it will leave grit. And that's never very tasty. I'm a texture person, so I don't like it. But so I use a cinnamon stick and it flavors it perfectly with half a stick. Um, I reuse the sticks for the following week. Um, and like I said, I will then close these off. These are from my last batch, remember, from last week. I will close these off, leave them on the counter for 24 hours, and then put them in the fridge. One other complication you have when you're using fruit, as you can see with these apples, all the apples don't go to all the way in. If any of these come to the top and the surface, what's going to grow? Mold. So if you leave them out for three days. Now, to get the best carbonation, that's the best way to do it is to leave it for three days but then you have the complication of possible mold if you can't get all your fruit to sink in the kombucha to remedy that people put they liquefy um, melt a little bit of coconut oil wait till it is almost solidified and then they pour it on the top to create a surface um, that helps uh, the coconut oil helps prevent mold buildup so people will do that, leaves a little bit of coconut flavor in your kombucha. You just take it out when you're done. 
Uh, it'll leave a little bit of flavor, not major. Um, but I, we like to drink ours quickly, so we do ours in 24 hours. Again, that's for making it after you've already made your batch. It's, it's already fermented. You're going to take this and you're going to use it for next week's batch. Um, what I mean is, this is going to be, this is all ready to go for next week. After I, I'm going to cover it, step it off to the side, leave it for a week, and come back. Now, for me, everybody says anywhere from 7 to 14 days for kombucha. The SCOBY eats the sugar that's in the sweet tea. That's its food. Now, I like mine at 8 days. Not 7 days, not 9 days, 8 days. That's what, to me, is a perfect blend between sweet and tart. It still has a little bit of sugar left in there that the SCOBY hasn't eaten, but it also starting to become that tart kombucha flavor that people come to enjoy. So you're going to find for your own balance, if you've never tried kombucha before, I can guarantee you probably won't like it the first time you have it. It has its own acquired taste. It's like anything else, wine, beer, anything that's fermented, it has an acquired taste. You're going to have to take your time um, every day from seven to ten days tasting a little bit of it and seeing is it a combination of what you like? Some people like it sweeter, we'll go at six days. Some people like it really tart and we'll wait 10 to 12 days. And so it's all up to your liking. Um, just play around with it every week. You, it's really hard to kill the SCOBYs. So, um, but there are some things you need to look out for. Now the SCOBY is, like I said, a brownish tannish color. And it has, yeah, I don't want to say any dark, really dark spots on it. This is only because this is thin here. Um, and it has this stuff at the bottom that will actually flake off. Um, some of the stuff at the bottom, like here, this will flake off and make little bits into your thing. That's okay to eat. That's actually good for you. It's got good probiotics. Um, what you want to do is look for... Um, dime size or nickel size areas on your SCOBY, they may look like mold. They're maybe black, green, white. Anything that looks off, you have to throw it away. Don't even try to salvage it. It's Don't even salvage its tea. Just throw it away because it could be toxic mold. You don't want to mess around with that. So I have never had that problem. Um, so it, it's... People, I think, if they don't clean out their things right, if they use antibacterial soap, if they don't wash their hands before they touch your SCOBY, you can introduce new germs to it. So you have to be very careful, but not overly um, neurotic about it. You just, just be careful with, you know, cleanliness, that's all. Um, and I, of course, I don't use antibacterial soap on my hands before I touch the SCOBY. It's another important thing. I use just the Dawn liquid soap here for the kitchen. So... Um, so those are things that you need to uh, remember and to keep in mind. Otherwise, that's it for making kombucha. It's simple. It looks like a lot. However, I'm also making this for five of us, um, and we drink two gallons a week. So that's just us, and we like it a lot. So if you're just one or two people and you want to just do this size, perfect. You can do just a gallon size. Uh, maybe for a family of three or four, you don't drink that much. Um, I have a sister, she has eight children, she makes six gallons a week. So everybody's going to make, you know, their own different. And like I said, your SCOBY is going to grow. So even if you only have one SCOBY to start with and one gallon to start with, you can also increase that in a couple of weeks when you have little babies growing on it. You can start a whole nother batch with that baby and still have your mother. And that way, you can continue to grow more batches, or you can sell them, or you just get rid of them. Because you don't want the more SCOBY here that you have, the more sugar it's going to eat. So it's going to go tart a lot faster. So just keep that in mind um, as you, you know, go throughout your SCOBY growing expedition. Thank you very much.